Well, I guess it's just a question. Yeah. And he does some unusual songs. We asked him to do at least too far. We'll go from that. All right. Well, it's good to be back with you again. That's the crew. Heading to Mississippi. And I tell you, that's, that's one thing you got to do. Sing that song. You got to take it one day at a time. I mean, you got to forget what happened yesterday. Yeah. And they don't say what's going to happen. Worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, you just got to take it just one day at a time. There's nothing one day. Keep praying, keep up to God, keep busy. But I'm going to tell you, I found out knowing the Lord now for 30, 31 years that He won't fail me. Excuse me. He'll never fail me. Well, I guess you've all heard the story in the Bible it is told about the three Hebrew children and the idol made of gold. How the wicked king commanded that every king should bow to Baal. They said, do what you must, we're going to put our trust in the God that cannot fail. Oh, he's a great God, Jehovah, so greatly to be praised. He's a God that'll take us over every mountain sin has raised. Out of all the gods that's been worshipped, there's a difference you can tell. He's the only one that ever gave his son. He's a God that cannot fail. Now they were bound and yet determined that in the furnace these boys would go. But it didn't take long for the king to find out they weren't walking in the furnace alone. When he came to the edge of the furnace and he first leaned over the rail, he counted Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and the God that cannot fail. Oh, he's a great God, Jehovah, so great that to be praised. He's a God that'll take us over <coughs> Every mountain sin has raised Out of all God's been worshipped There's a difference you can tell He's the only one that ever gave his son He's a God that cannot fail Oh, he's the only one that ever gave his son He's a God that cannot fail <coughs> Oh, he won't fail you You know what I was talking to Brother Robert here yesterday about him. He mentioned that depression there, and I was thinking about it. The fellow I read about there back in the Depression, you know, most of us can't remember back that far, back in 1929, 1930, 31. Those three years were pretty hard times for the country of America. But there was one young fellow there, he was uh, about 25 years old, and had a wife and a couple little kids there, and nobody was working, nobody had any work all over the country. People were starving there. So he went out one day to find a job. And he come across an ad in a magazine there that said they needed a janitor, janitor to Presbyterian Church. <coughs> so he went down there real quick to see if they still had that job available. He got down there and asked the fellow, he said, y'all need a janitor? And the man said, yes, we do. So he looks there, I can work. I work with my hands all my life. I'm a good worker. I can do this job. I, I can take care of this place. He said, well, son, you know, I'll make you a work. You're young enough, you know, you know, you know. He just said, just fill out this application. He said, well, sir, the problem is, is I can't read or write. He said, I worked all my life. And he said, we worked hard since I was a kid. And I just never had a lot time for school. I can't read or write. And the man said, well, son, you can't read or write. I can't use you because like, we got to keep records. And, you know, things of that nature. You know what we do around here. He said, I can't use you. So he was kind of de dejected and kind of, you know, even bad, he left there. We had a little money, some change in his pocket. And he saw a fellow there was selling apples. So he bought a couple bushels of apples. He went door to door and started selling them apples door to door. When he made a profit, he went back and bought about 10 bushels of that apples. Selling them door to door. Well, he just kept doing that every day. Six months later, he's got a one-ton truck. Now he's hauling produce. Almost a year later, he's got two trucks. And he's got produce big. And in one bedroom of his house, he's got a bushel back, basket stacked up full of cash. And all, I mean, it's full of cash. And his wife said, honey, you can take this money down to the bank down there. He said, I'm kind of worried about all this money in the house. He said, no. So he got one bank 40 miles from here. That's the only bank open. Everybody, everybody's gone. Everybody's broke. He 
said, I ain't for this money in the bank. I don't trust anybody. He said, honey, we got to do something with all this money. He said, I'm worried. He said, okay. So they took you down to the bank down. He walked in. He had told the manager of the bank. He said, I need to make a deposit. The manager said, well, how much money you got? He said, I don't know. He said, what do you mean you don't know? I don't know how much money it is. He said, where's this money at? He said, that's the phone. So they went out there and more they threw that tarp back. There's about 12 bushel baskets full of cash there. And he said, man, son, let's get this money here counted. What do you take care of this? They took it there and counted. It was about $75,000 in 1929. He said, son, don't worry. We'll take care of it. We'll deposit this money for you. He said, just fill out this form here. He said, well, sir, I can't write. I can't fill that form in. I can't write. He, read it. he said, and you made all this money? He said, do you realize what you could be if you could read it right? He said, yes, sir, I'd be the back of the Presbyterian Church. <laughs>
And I found out when you do it his way, I mean, it'll keep you sweet. Yeah. You'll see what's going on there. Maybe you'll, you'll, you'll hear about everything going on nowadays. They won't even bother. But you want to look at the way the Lord Jesus looks. You stay close to him, you'll see things a different way. Yeah. Would you be a victor? Over every foe. Conquer every trial. In this old world. Overcome temptation that each day you meet. Keep in touch with Jesus. He will keep you sweet. Many hearts are broken, often aching breast. Waits the message spoken that will give it sweet rest. Your breath can bring them joy and peace complete. Keep in touch with Jesus. He will keep you sweet. Would you be a blessing all along the way? <clears throat> Would you be possessing perfect love each day? Just let the Holy Spirit overcome defeat. Keep in touch with Jesus. He will keep you sweet. Keep in touch with Jesus. Though the path be dim, let no cloud nor shadow sever you from Him. Joy or sorrow greet you, friend or foe you meet. Keep in touch with Jesus, He will keep you sweet. 